This is the brand new 2018 MacBook Air. And then this is the 2017 13 inch MacBook Pro. So what's really interesting about these two devices is that the MacBook Pro is only 50 pounds more than the MacBook Air, but then the MacBook Pro actually came out last year in 2017. So yeah, the Pro is a bit outdated, while the new MacBook Air literally came out basically two weeks ago. So which one should you guys get? As always, welcome to the ultimate zone of tech comparison between these two. Uh, I'll be testing out everything, including real world usage, not just benchmarks. So yeah, here's everything you need to know between the MacBook Air 2018 and the MacBook Pro 13 inch 2017. Let's see which one is worth it the most. If you're the kind of person that always forgets their passwords, you can easily remember all of your passwords for free with LastPass or sponsor for this video by using the link in the description. Okay, so the first difference between the two is in terms of the body. So the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro have the exact same width, the exact same length. The only main difference here is in terms of the thickness. So the Air has this wedge-shaped design, so it's thinner on the front and then it gets thicker towards the back, while the Pro has the same thickness throughout the entire body. The MacBook Air's thickest point is actually thicker than the MacBook Pro. When it comes to the weight, the Air is 1.25 kilograms versus 1.37 kilograms that the Pro has, but realistically, they do feel about the same. I actually do find the Pro to be more comfortable to hold in my lap and type on since the design is uniform, but this might be because I've gotten so used to my Pro. So if you're the kind of person that travels a lot, both are pretty much the same when it comes to portability. Now, the second difference between the two, this is quite a big one, and that's the display. So they're both 256 by 1600 in resolution, but the MacBook Pro's display is brighter at 500 nits of brightness versus 300, and then the colors do pop up more on the MacBook Pro. So yeah, if you plan on doing any photo or video editing, you get a DCI-P3 display on the MacBook Pro versus 100% sRGB on the MacBook Air. So you get more, more colors, a larger color gamut on the MacBook Pro versus the Air. I mean, honestly, the MacBook Pro's display is actually pretty good. So unless you put it side by side to the MacBook Pro's display, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference in terms of the brightness and the color. Now, the third big difference is when it comes to the performance. So, on paper, they both look really similar. 120 gigabytes of flash storage, a dual core Intel Core i5 processor, and 8 gigabytes of LP DR3 memory, uh, 2133 megahertz. So, yeah. They look really similar, but if you dig deeper, they're actually very different computers. So the MacBook Air comes with a 7 watt, low power, fanless Intel Y series processor, similar to the 12 inch MacBook processor, whereas the 13 inch MacBook Pro comes with a much more powerful 15 watt processor, an Intel U series. Now, interesting enough, Apple did add a fan to the MacBook Air to keep the temperatures low, even though the processor itself does not require one. Okay, but how's the actual performance? Is the MacBook Pro significantly faster than the Air? Well, in terms of fluidity and everyday use, both systems feel very smooth actually, I haven't had any major lag on any of them. The MacBook Pro does feel slightly snappier, but not by a huge margin, so yeah, again, unless you use them side by side, you wouldn't be able to tell which one is faster, uh, if it's faster than the other. In terms of the disk speed test, they're both very, very fast, with the MacBook Pro being slightly faster by 200 megabytes per second or so in the right performance, and then the read speeds are about the same, just over 2 gigabytes per second, which is very impressive on both. And if we take a look at the Geekbench scores, the MacBook Air scores close to 2000 points less than the MacBook Pro on the multi-core score and 300 points less in the single core score. Moving on to Cinebench R15, the 13-inch MacBook Pro scored 387 for the CPU versus 262 on the Air. And just to give you guys an idea, my 15-inch top-of-the-line MacBook Pro 2018 scored just over 1000 points for the CPU score. GPU-wise, we have the Intel Iris Plus 640 on the 13-inch MacBook Pro versus the Intel UHD Graphics. 617 on the MacBook Air. As for the actual numbers, we get 50 frames per second in the GPU test on the 13-inch MacBook Pro versus 32 frames per second on the Air, and again, just to give you guys an idea, 104 on the 15-inch MacBook Pro uh, with the Radeon Pro 560X GPU. Almost a 20 frames per second difference between the 2018 Air and the 2017 13-inch Pro, that's actually a lot. So if you plan on doing any gaming, none of these are obviously made for gaming, but if you plan on doing that, then the 13-inch MacBook Pro is the better choice. Choice. But what about, you know, actual work? What about video editing? For example, is there a massive difference between the two? So I have the same project here. It's the Surface Pro 6 Full Review, which is an extremely complex project with a ton of titles, transitions, and curves for color grading. By the way, if you haven't seen that video, check it out here. Uh, but yeah, scrolling through the timeline is actually very choppy on both. A tiny bit less choppy on the 13-inch MacBook Pro. This is, by the way, in quality mode, so if you play this back in performance, it is definitely playable and viewable on both, which is quite surprising 
surprising, especially on the MacBook Air. Now, my top of the line 2018 i9 MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes of RAM with the 560X GPU took 28 minutes to export this 13 minute video. So obviously that's, that's a lot, but then the MacBook Pro 13 inch took one hour and two minutes. So yeah, more than double uh, of the 15 inch MacBook Pro. And then the MacBook Air took even longer, one hour and 51 minutes. So almost double the amount of time the 13 inch MacBook Pro took and basically four times more than the 15 inch MacBook Pro. Temperature wise, we had 85 degrees, by the way, on the MacBook Pro versus 75 degrees on the MacBook Air. So the Air was a bit cooler, but let's be honest, who cares? The Pro was much faster. Now, both the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro have two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left, which is huge. So this means that you can connect 5K monitors, one monitor or two 4K monitors on each of these. And even better, you can connect external GPUs or graphics cards, you know, to make your systems much faster. So for example, I've connected my Vega 64 with a Razer Core X external uh, GPU enclosure links for both in the description by the way and good news we've actually seen a pretty big performance improvement on both. So the MacBook Pro 13 inch only took 37 minutes down from one hour and two minutes so a big improvement still not as fast as the 15 inch by the way and then the MacBook Air took 41 minutes uh, from one hour and 51 minutes which is a huge improvement from before again still not as fast as the 15 inch MacBook Pro with the dedicated GPU. But of course that without the eGPU there is still a considerable amount of difference, performance difference uh, between the 13 inch 2017 MacBook Pro and the 2018 MacBook Air and you know a 52 minute difference in exports uh, might not seem that that much but it actually is obviously if you're doing this daily or even multiple times a day then a pro is a much much better choice now there are a few more differences between the two so for example the speakers are better on the macbook pro not by a huge margin but listen to this and let me know what you guys think Then the MacBook Pro also charges faster. Fun fact, in the box we get a 61 watt charger with a Pro versus only a 30 watt charger with the MacBook Air. However, the MacBook Air does have a few advantages of its own. So the battery lasts up to 12 hours versus 10 hours on the Pro. Uh, and we also get the T2 processor built in, which is actually similar to Apple's A10 processor inside the iPhone 7. And it handles the boot sequence, the camera, the microphone, speakers, and even drive encryption in real time. However, at the moment, there are quite a few issues with Apple's T2 devices, the MacBook Pro 2018, uh, the MacBook Air 2018, and the iMac Pro, and also the Mac Mini, where they actually crash randomly with the BridgeOS error, if you're familiar with that, when using Thunderbolt devices. I've actually had a crash on the MacBook Air about 10 minutes ago before recording this video, not even joking. So yeah, it's not looking that great with the Apple T2 processor, considering that these issues have been happening for the past year since the iMac Pro has been released and they still haven't been fixed yet. Now, interesting enough, the trackpad is actually larger on the MacBook Pro when compared to the Air, even though they have the exact same keyboard size and the exact same uh, frame size. So yeah, that's interesting. So obviously I do prefer the larger trackpad on the MacBook Pro. And finally, if you do a lot of typing, you probably care a lot about a keyboard. And the MacBook Air's keyboard is actually better, much better than the Pro in every single way. So first off, it uses Apple's third generation butterfly key switch mechanism compared to the second gen that's in the 2017 MacBook Pro. And typing on the third gen is indeed better. So the keys have more travel and it feels so much quicker and easier to type on the Air than it feels on the MacBook Pro. And the second keyboard difference is that a MacBook Air now comes with Touch ID. So not only can you log in using your fingerprints, but you can also make Apple Pay payments as well as store all of your passwords using Touch ID. But let's say that you want to store all of your passwords securely on the MacBook Pro as well, which doesn't have Touch ID. Well, in that case, check out LastPass, our sponsor for this video. LastPass is a password manager tool that remembers all of your passwords, so you don't have to. All you need is to remember one single master password, and with that, you can unlock all of your other passwords and quickly use them in your everyday apps. And what's even better is that LastPass works on iOS, Android, Mac, as well as Windows, and everything is cloud synced, so your passwords would stay synced on all of your devices. Hashtag freedom from frustration. And actually, what's even better is that LastPass isn't just for passwords. You can store Wi-Fi passwords, addresses, credit card details, and way more, so that when you want to buy something online, your details get automatically filled in for you. And everything is highly encrypted, so not even LastPass can read your passwords. Get LastPass for free using the link below, and thanks to LastPass for sponsoring this video. Okay, so in the end, which one should you guys get? Which one is better, the MacBook Pro 2017 or the MacBook Air 2018? So here's the thing, people are saying that the MacBook Air is the weird one because, you know, it's only 50 pounds cheaper than a 13-inch Pro, and the Pro is a better device. But actually, no. 
The 13 inch MacBook Pro is the weird one here. So you see it comes with a dual core processor. It hasn't been updated since last year, since 2017. So I bet that Apple would be removing the 13 inch MacBook Pro baseline from their lineup very soon and only keep the 12 inch MacBook, uh, the new MacBook Air, and then the touch bar MacBook Pros, uh, which cost quite a bit more, but do offer significantly better performance than the baseline non-touch bar 13 inch model. But until then, until Apple gets rid of the baseline Pro, it is still a better device than the Air. It has the same size almost the same weight, better speakers, a much better display, better performance, which is always good to have if you plan on, you know, using this for a few years. And then the MacBook Air is better in terms of the battery life, which if you do a lot of typing, yes, you'll enjoy the keyboard and the fingerprint sensor, that's cool. But again, overall, I would still go with the MacBook Pro. Links for both are in the description. If you buy from the links below, you also support a channel. Um, but yeah, let me know what do you guys think about the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air. And definitely subscribe to notifications if you want to see more in-depth videos like this one. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. Uh, but yeah, let me know what do you guys think. Like this video if you've enjoyed it to let me know. Also check out Instagram. I've redone the whole Zen Effect Instagram page with more behind the scenes stuff and more interesting shots. So definitely, you know, follow on Instagram at Zen of Tech and also join the zone. Uh, tap the join button and you support a channel and you also get access to some pretty cool exclusive features. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. Let me know if you've made it until the end. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zen of Tech, signing out. Cheers.